more time. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, 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 oh. be in my mouth. Hey, hey, hey. Every single said I am down when I am up. I'll sing a song, I'll lift you up. I got a reason to celebrate. Cause in the good and the bad, my hands are raised. Cause this is the day that the Lord has made. So I will give you praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth, be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. When I am down, when I am I'll sing a song, I'll lift you up, I got a reason. 
worship you tonight, God. Hallelujah. How many are thankful for the name of Jesus tonight? You know, Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. It says, Forget not all his benefits. There was once a man who pastured a poverty-stricken church in the hidden hills of Mexico. He did all that he could for the kingdom of God. He led, he reached, he taught, and he preached, yet discouragement seemed to weigh heavily upon him. But it was one Sunday as his head hung low, staring at the dirt floor below his feet, he began to hear the voices of a humble congregation. They sang unto the Lord, and their song talked about the great attributes of their God, that there was no one like him. And immediately his spirit was rejuvenated. His countenance was lifted because he just needed a reminder of the great attributes of his God. Isaiah 46 and verse number 9 says, Remember the former things of old church. Remember, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. If you find yourself in need of a reminder to bless the Lord tonight, I'm here to tell you he's still a strong tower. He's still a deliverer. He's still a mighty fortress. He's still everything that you needed to be. So I'm going to bless the Lord. Because I know in my time of need, He provided. I know when I need in the future, He will provide. So I will bless the Lord. And when I think I'm done, I'm going to bless Him some more.
that going right now. It doesn't matter if a song was from 50 years ago or if it was from yesterday. There's still victory in that name. And when you call on that name, the enemy has to flee. I'm thankful for that tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if you can't tell by now, this is an apostolic Pentecostal event. We're going to be singing and talking about the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a book in the Bible that so many love and so many can quote scripture from. But it wasn't just for that time. Acts 2.42 says, and they continued in the apostles' doctrine steadfastly and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Now thousands of years later, we're still experiencing that same revival today. Millions are being filled with the Holy Ghost. Lives are being changed. Miracles are happening. Not only that, but this apostolic message is multicultural, it's multiracial, and it's multigenerational. This message, it wasn't just for my grandma and grandpa's generation. It wasn't just for the apostles' time, but it's for every single generation. And now, this generation is going to go boldly into this world, proclaiming the gospel, and miracles, signs, and wonders are going to follow. Because the church is alive. Spirit. 
The devil might have, might have tried to silence us. The world might have tried to silence us. But we can testify today the church is alive because our God is alive. We preached about it last Sunday for Easter. And I'm so thankful that our God is risen. But not only did he rise and ascend to heaven, but he sent down the comforter, the Holy Ghost, to live inside each and every one of us today. And he is living in every Holy Ghost filled believer. As we transition into this next song, I understand that in this room there are likely many situations represented that we would classify as God-sized problems. Situations that are out of your own control. You've exhausted all your resources. But I've come to encourage you today with a scripture found in Zechariah chapter 4. It says, not by power and not by might, but by the spirit of the living God. Who art thou, O great mountain? I like to say it like this, who art thou, O great sickness? Who art thou, O great trial? Who art thou, O great problem? I serve the living God who has all power and all authority. So if you walked in needing a healing, I know the healer and he's here. If you walked in with a financial burden, I know the provider and he's here in this room today. Maybe you walked in and, and you're wrestling with your salvation. I know the Savior and He knows you. So right now, why don't we just begin to cast every care at the feet of Jesus and watch Him solve your God-sized problem. If you got a God-sized problem, He can solve yeah. There's just some problems only God can fix And there'll be some moments That just don't make sense I've seen it happen Time and time again There's just some problems Only God can fix oh. There's just some battles Flesh and blood can There'll be some moments that just don't make sense. I can't see it now, but I'm still convinced that there's just some problems only God can fix. Not by power.
fortress, my refuge, still a strong tower, still a strong tower, my help, defender, still a strong tower, still a strong tower. Lift up our voice and give the Lord high praise. Come on, let's lift up our voice with victory. It is one thing to sing it. It's another thing to experience it. And we have an opportunity right now to experience the life-transforming power of Jesus Christ. I'm going to invite us to make a little space around this altar right now. And if you have need of a miracle, I'm inviting you out of your seat into this altar. Whether it be a miracle of body, of mind, of finances, if you just need a breakthrough in your spirit and you're hungry for, for a fresh touch of God, it's one thing to sing it, but it's another thing to experience it. I'm inviting you out of your seats now. Come on, if you have a need, step forward. Jesus was just passing through Jericho. The scripture gives no indication he intended on stopping, but one man's hunger one man's cry and Jesus stopped and healed and made whole if you have need lift up your hands church family gather in right now upon the authority of God's word and by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we are speaking to mountains of sickness mountains of infirmity we are speaking to storms and circumstances of profound confusion, but we're not speaking in our own power or in our own name, but we call on the name of Jesus Christ and cancer disappears. When we speak the name of Jesus, organs are made whole. Storms are no more. Come on, that's it. Say that name. Say that name. 
We speak the name of Jesus to every worry, to every fear, to every anxiety. Let the grip of depression be loosed from your mind. Yes, enter in to the joy of the Lord. Enter in to the rest of God. We speak the name of Jesus to every problem, to every fear. We speak the name of Jesus. Sickness disappears. Yes, yes. Come on, this is the atmosphere where tumors disappear. This is the kind of atmosphere where the thing the doctor said could never be reversed is reversed. This is the kind of atmosphere where what some said was impossible becomes possible.
healing spirit of the living God. Not my battle, it's not, not my fight, only by the spirit of the living spirit. Oh, we give him praise now in this house. Yes, Lord Jesus. You are so good to us, Lord. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. I'm so happy about what the Lord is doing, recovery and restoration and the tender mercies of the Lord. I'm going to let you find your seat if you can. Thank you, your way. We're honored tonight to have the Indiana Bible College Corral with us. Let's, let's show our appreciation to them. Would you do that? I'll step aside in a moment for our offering and a few announcements. I wanted to give honor to a couple of people here Many years ago, Brother Lyndall Anderson uh, began this journey at Indiana Bible College. Just about the time I was, uh, I was leaving, you had come, and we want to recognize you, Brother Anderson. Would you please stand? He has been leading the music at Calvary Tabernacle at Indiana Bible College, and we give you honor tonight. Now, there's another man that's here who, is, who was with me when I was married. He journeyed all the way down to DeRitter, Louisiana, showed up. He has shown up at every juncture in my life, every important moment in my life. In fact, we used to call him the angel because he would show up when you least expected him. And when you didn't even really want him to show up, he would show up. And we called him uh, affectionately the Sleeve. Um, his name is Brother Jim Sleeva. I, Brother Sleeva, where are you, Brother Sleeva? I just saw you somewhere. Would you come up here? Would you just come, come up here, Brother Sleeva? You should have done this a long time ago, but come up here. I want to just, I want you just to greet the saints of new life. And we love you. We honor you. What a, what a wonderful leader Brother Jim Sleeve is. Come, come, my brother. I love you so much. We're grateful that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Very kind words. So, I'm so privileged to be here. And uh, thank you for making me look good. I actually wrecked his vet when he first came to school. Um, but I had it fixed before he got it back, I think. But... Uh, but God's been so good, and, and really, uh, my prayer is not just for you, but you're leading this church, and that is such an awesome thing to see what God is doing. Man, God's just awesome. And uh, he has been so good to all of us folks. He really has. And so thank you for this privilege of being with you and to be able to have so many good memories from way back in the day. So thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's great to see all of you in the house of God, 6 p.m. on a Sunday night. Why don't we give all of our guests a big hand for being here tonight. We welcome you to New Life Fellowship, where no one has a past and everyone has a future. If you are a guest here today and it's your first or second time, perhaps your third, we want to get to know you. And so we invite you to fill out a Connect card. You can do so by online. You can scan the QR code on the screen. Um, our ushers also have a physical copy. And Turn that into the Welcome Center and get a free gift, and we want to know you and send you some things and connect with you. Also, we have an announcement as our ushers are coming to serve you for tonight's offering and returning our tithes. We are continuing a revival. This is a great thing this entire month, 10.30 a.m. on Sundays, 6 p.m. Sunday night. This Sunday morning, our pastor is going to preach to us, and then Sunday night, Kay Shock is going to minister and we're gonna come expecting. Bring somebody with you, fill up your cars. And we're excited about that. Let's bow our heads and pray for our offering. Lord, I thank you, God, for what you're doing in this house. We pray for this offering, for supplying all of our need. We give today with fullness of heart. We return back of our tithes, for this is the will of the Lord. And we give thanks in all things. In Jesus' name, amen.
Praise the Lord, church. My name is Trace. This is Cadence. And these are all my very best friends on the Indiana Bible College Corral. And we are so excited to be with you guys in Terre Haute, Indiana. Woo! I know I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm going to hand the mic over to her, let her tell you about some of the stuff we have going back there, and about a special event we have coming up next week, or this week, excuse me. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to hand the mic over to her. We really are so, so excited to be here. We appreciate the love and the support that you show us and the wonderful hospitality that we've already experienced just in the few hours that we've been here. We're so, so excited to be here to worship with you. So I won't take much of your time. Um, we only have two big announcements. First is this Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we have our Music Fest at Calvary. So exciting. Has anybody here ever been to Music Fest? Okay, yeah, we got quite a few, so you guys know how good it is. Um, if you have any questions about that and would like to hear some more about it, you can go to our booth, which will be out in the lobby. And since we're talking about the booth, we have some things here. These are just a few of them. We have a lot of stuff, but we have some hoodies, some crew necks, lots of different colors, um, different designs and everything. We have some t-shirts. Ah, very exciting. We also have hats and um, we have some free things, some free pens that you can write with, some free pins that you put on your shirt, and flyers and so many different things. But we would love if you would come out and talk to us at the booth, ask us some questions. We'd love to get to know you. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you so, so much again for having us here. And we hope that you not only enjoy the music, but you worship along with us. Uh, like Caden said, we appreciate your hospitality. We're excited to be with you here. But we do want to thank uh, three special people tonight. Um, one, of course, we want to thank Pastor Carson. We love you very much. We thank you for letting us minister. Um, and none of this would be able to happen without our two fearless leaders, Dr. Lyndall Anderson and Brother Tim Hall. We love you very much. You guys are so special to us. Um, one thing I've learned in my life is that when I'm in a trial, when I'm in a time where I need uplifting, um, I can always find peace when I sing about Jesus. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're just going to sing a little bit about our Lord and Savior, Jesus.
somebody would just pick up your feet in the room today. Can we just make hell mad? Can we just stomp on the devil a little bit? We may have trials. We may have tribulations. But God, but God, but God. Woo! Jesus, Jesus, we can call on the name. It's good to sing about Jesus. It's good to shout unto him. He is the only one that's worthy of our praise. I turn your attention tonight to the book of 1 Kings. I turn you to the fifth chapter saying thank you to this corral for leading us. We honor you. You've done amazing. You've had a long day and you've sang with excellence. Don't go take a 30-minute break. I need you to preach with me a little bit. I know you're tired, but I'm tired, so don't be gone too long. If you, <laughs> What a cool opportunity to be able to be here in this amazing church with you precious people. Thank you. You've showed up for church on a Sunday night. I tell you what, everybody in the room's ready, I think, maybe. Just you showed up Sunday night. It's always a good time to praise the Lord. It's always a good time to come together. And magnify him. I appreciate the opportunity to be here with my precious wife and our family. Certainly to be with Dr. Anderson and Brother Hall in this corral. Uh, Brother Harpole, Sister Harpole, thanks for the invitation. Thanks for being my friend. I'm newer to the Indiana district. Uh, this is really the way it's supposed to be. You know, pastors that pastor close can still be friends and work together. It's kind of a kingdom of God thing. And, and uh, isn't that astounding how that works out? It's it's amazing that it's not his kingdom and it's not my kingdom. It's the king of kings kingdom. And, and we're in this together. Listen, I want you to know that when we, when we found out Terre Haute was finishing this building, we preached about it from our church and praised about it with our ministry team and celebrated. You can't. This is the way it works. We win together and we lose together. We, it's the kingdom of God. Isn't that something? It's what we're supposed to be doing. We got a lot of cities to be reaching in a very short amount of time. And we got to reach every metropolitan area. And we got to reach every middle-sized city. And we've got to reach every village. We do. We got a lot of villages. I am the product of somebody who was willing to go to a village and preach. I pastor a church larger than the town I grew up in. That's because God's got a sense of humor. But I'm going to tell you this, everywhere we can get a preacher, we need a preacher. And God has called us for such a time as this. Brother Fisher, so good to be with you. The king of youth ministry for so long. Sure honor you, your family. My longtime friend, Brother McLeod. Man, just, just good to be in God's house. First Kings chapter 5. I want to read verse 5. I got a lot of friends here. I'm making a mistake if I start calling names, which I've already done. So if you're offended, I hope you pray through by the time this message is over tonight. <laughs> First Kings chapter 5. I preached this message some time ago, and the Lord wouldn't leave me alone about it today. So I'm going to share this tonight. And I behold, verse 5 says, I purpose to build an house unto the name of the Lord my God as the Lord spoke unto David my father saying thy son whom I will set upon thy throne in thy room he shall build an house unto my name I loved watching these young people these kids these young people and these young adults stretching from Dan to Beersheba across the front of this place worshiping God we want a church where the next generation is worshiping Him. It speaks a lot about church health to see this next generation 
And what we've just read about is the next generation saying, it's got to be more than my father's dream. I've got to be, yeah, I've got to be busy about getting my father's dream accomplished. That's what our generation is doing. Turn one chapter, if you will, to chapter 6 and the 38th verse where we come to the completion of said task. It says, and in the 11th year in the month Bull, which is the 8th month, was the house finished throughout all the parts thereof. And according to all the fashion of it, so was he seven years. That's a pretty long building project. (laughs) Building projects can be tough. But when they're right, they're right. So was he seven years in building it. I want to preach tonight. The house tells a story. The house tells a story. Now, I believe it would be our custom, so would you pray with me right now that the Holy Ghost would do what only the Holy Ghost can do through the power of his word. Lord Jesus, we love you. We call upon you right now. Let your spirit move. Let it infiltrate the entirety of this house, every man, every woman. Dear Lord, help us not to set idle, help us not to miss the moment, but let the great presence of your Spirit, let it make us move into response to the Word. While some of us are more demonstrative than others with our outside emotions, I'm I'm really talking about a heart change. I'm talking about an evaluation. If this is a revival night, I'm praying you might revive some things in us the joy the peace the strength the refreshment the zeal for the house of God we ask it in the mighty and the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ and let everybody say amen amen before you're seated maybe find somebody give them a real good smile show them every tooth you own legally come on I like to say even if you bought them they're yours Even if you're still making payments, they're in your mouth. Show them off. The house tells a story. It wasn't an extravagant house, not by the measures of this particular house, only 90 by 30 by 45, but the building process was a little bit different. But the house was going to tell a story. It was an awesome opportunity, Pastor Harpo, that I had. I few years back, got to go and preach a revival in that same small town where I was just a boy growing up on a, on a pew in a church that would fit in about half of this section right over here. And I was preaching a, a sectional youth revival, and when I got there, I got there intentionally a little bit early. There was no fashionably late for me. The service was starting at 7 or 7.30. I I can't remember exactly, but I went an hour early because I wanted to get off the one singular exit. The town's so small. The village is so small. There's one exit, you know. Anybody from a town like that? You grew up in a place like that? Come on, all all three of us. There are cows and horses would have been more excited about that, but listen, it's it's where we're from. And got off on that one on that one exit and and, and I drove down, and just past the singular gas station is the church there on the right-hand side. But I got there early not to be at the church. I, I kept driving by, and I came to the stop sign, and I turned right, and I went over what every small town needs. I went over the railroad tracks, and I came there on the left is the grocery store slash feed store slash when I was a kid, rent WWF video store. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know. Some of you do. And I turned left there at that, and I went on down that old, what was called Dongola Country Road. And I went down that old country road, and I passed what we called a lake. Really, was a pond, but we called it a lake. And I drove on down that old road, and I pulled into a little gravel turnaround some couple miles down, and there was an old white farmhouse. I turned into that little gravel turnaround, and I was driving my truck. I never even turned my truck off. I left it running. In fact, I watched the house for motion. I wanted to make sure anybody didn't come out to wonder why I was sitting there in their little gravel turnaround, and I saw a couple of cars drive by. No one seemed to move, and it didn't take me more than a minute or so. And While I never turned the engine off, 
boy, I, I opened up that door and I jumped out, not physically, but mentally. And I took off running across that grass. Memory's a beautiful thing. Sister Harpo, by the time that I got across that grass, I wasn't a grown man with children of my own about to preach a revival. I was just a little kid. And I went in the back screen door and I opened up that screen door and there there was that, that old concrete that we, we, we glued down. You know that green, real thin grass carpet that made it into every room that didn't matter? <laughs> that stuff. And I was just a little kid in my memory, having never actually stepped out of my truck. And I, I walked in, and once I went through that little foyer room, I opened up, and I, I swung that door open, and you opened it right into the kitchen. And I was standing in the kitchen as a little boy the night that my mom let me sleep through a fish fry. It's a tragic memory. That's the thing of counseling. In southern Illinois, fish fry and homemade ice cream was one if you don't like homemade ice cream, you are dismissed right now. You can leave. You won't like anything else. I was standing there. I was just this tall. I was just a little pudgy kid. Liked fried fish. And I loved homemade ice cream. And I showed up and everybody was coming over. It was a big deal. And I woke up and everybody was gone. There was a tiny little scrap of fish in the fryer. And I remember asking my mom, Mom, where, when's everybody coming over? She said, oh, baby, you were so tired. I let you sleep. Everybody's already left. To this day, I remember, I don't know where the words came from, I don't know where I had heard them, but these are the words that came out of my tiny body, my mouth. I said, Mom, you never let a man sleep through a fish fry. <laughs> <laughs> and in my memory, still having never left my truck, I ran around the corner and there in the side hallway, there's one of those phones, and it had a, had a thing on it. It was a cord, and I promise you that cord, Brother Harpole, I could hold that phone, and I could walk to you. That cord was so long. It's one of those cords that if you talk long enough, you could get in such a mess. <laughs> if you had a sibling like my older brother did, that cord came in. It was one of those old phones that had, anybody remember this? Somebody had a nine in their number. It was faster to walk to their house than it was. <laughs> and I ran up those stairs. I ran up those stairs and in my memory, all of this, having still never left the truck, I'm just a little kid again in the banks of my memory. I'm pulling out old photos. I'm blowing the dust off of them. I'm, I'm remembering this live. I, I ran up those old rickety stairs and I looked to the right, that bed where I had went through a season. Brother Fisher, I convinced myself that I was Bat Boy. I had built some awesome weaponry out of Legos and string and uh, found out that I could terrorize my sister quite well in my Bat Boy. Did anybody else go through a phase where you put a towel around your neck with a safety pin, praying to God that safety pin didn't come undone right by your jugular. Anybody else? You didn't do that? You need a better imagination. Those were good times. It was during that same phase that I ran back down those steps. Man, all this in my memory. So fast, it's happening lightning fast. I ran back down those steps and through the kitchen. I looked at that little piece of fish one more time. I ran back out across that green carpet and I, I went out to the back because there was a place on the back side of that old white farmhouse where you could access the roof. And I went to the place that during this phase I had convinced myself I could fly. And with expedience, I was on the ground in the place I realized I could not. <laughs> I'm running through all of these memories. I'm enjoying them so thoroughly. I'm living them. And the older I get, the more sentimental I seem to feel. Any other sentimental people in here, it's just the reality. I remember my parents taking me to their childhood homes and thinking, I would never do this. to. I will do this to my kids. I have and I will. And they're going to like it. It was about this time in the truck that all of a sudden in the rear view mirror, red lights, someone driving by didn't recognize my vehicle here in the Osmond's house and they hit their brake lights wondering if they needed to be concerned with this strange truck sitting in the gravel turnaround. And in that moment, all of a sudden it hit me. I wonder how many cars have driven 
by while I've been sitting here. I hadn't sitting there long, maybe maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes at this point going down memory lane. And I, I started thinking how many cars had drove by. And I was sitting there in that gravel, that gravel turnaround, thinking if this house spoke to them, what it speaks to me, they would want to pull into. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot even begin to estimate how many people have carelessly driven by this new building. But if they knew what we know, that's why Sunday nights aren't too hard for us every now and then. If they knew what we know about the story that this house tells. Are you with me? Do you understand where I'm going tonight? It's not a large house. It's only some 90 by 30 by 45. I echo from my opening remarks. It's, it's not large in stature, but the force, the force of workers is going to be extravagant. Solomon is going to finish what the father had dreamed up. And ladies and gentlemen, I would submit to you tonight that we are in the closing act before eternity takes over. And while there is light and while there is day, we must do everything we can to bring to fulfillment the dreams of the prophets and the patriarchs. We are bringing the, the, the statements that have been said about Terre Haute, the promises that have been spoken over our families, over our friends, over our neighborhoods. We're bringing them to pass, but it takes work, and it would take Solomon work. In fact, in order to bring this house to life, it was going to take a vast number of workers. In this building project, this small building project of First Kings, this house of the Lord that would be built, there would be 70,000 men employed to cut stone. That would be the entirety of their job. If you can imagine a life in a situation without power tools, the devil is a liar. Any men in the room like power tools? Has anybody besides me ever went to Home Depot wearing a tape measure? I'm not a con Come on, you lie, you fry. Tell the truth on yourself. Anybody else parking contractor parking and you don't belong, but you feel like you Come on, I feel your spirit in this room. I got power tools in my garage. I don't even know what they do, but I like having them. I just feel better. Just feel better. I, every now and then somebody will notice it. Man, I, that's nice. <laughs> it is nice. <laughs> what do you do with it? Mm, stuff. We, just, we get stuff done. <laughs> Can you imagine that that's the job requirement? Cut stone. With what? Stone stuff. And then 80,000 guys are recruited to carry stone. How do you like showing up for that job interview? Would you like to cut stone or carry stone? What were my options again? You can cut or you can carry. Is that it? Well, there are going to be 3,300 guys that we let be foremans. What do they do? I always tease my, I, I grew up in a very blue collar family. My dad's a welder, pipe fitter. My dad was a foreman a lot, so I always tease. He gets mad when I say this. I said, these are the 3,300 that drank coffee and said, lift with your legs. Lift, lift with you. <laughs> if you're a foreman, calm down. That's funny. You know that's funny. That's <laughs> Got 150,000 guys cutting stone, 3,000 guys overseeing it, and they, they're going to pull it 30,000 Sidonians to fall timber. It's a big work project. And we're building buildings with modern extravagance, hoping we can get 1,000 to show up. Seven years, 180,000 plus people 
putting it together, working it together. I've often wondered those, those 150,000 that are cutting stone and carrying stone. I, I want to see the before and after of some of those guys, what they look like when they started versus what they look like when they're done. Carry stone for seven years and tell me it won't change you. Any young guy in the room that likes to pump iron, I'm telling you, you carry stone. Holding the sanctity of the place so sacred that they would not even cut in its proximity. So they, they have to cut and they have to carry because woven into the fabric of their being is we're doing it unto the name of the Lord. We're, we're doing it unto the name of the Lord. And there's nothing like the house of and by the time they might have started, they could have been weak and scrawny guys. But seven years later, I see their bulging biceps. And it's a pretty good illustration that while you're building the church, the church is building you. Because anybody that's been around for a while knows you can invest in the body and the body not be investing in you. You stick around a little while. You, you give your time a little while. It'll be making you I bet we got miracles all over this place of people that have invested financially and physically and sacrificially. You had checks show up in the mail. You had blessings come to your family. You had prophetic promises come good on delivery. It's because while you were building the church, the church. They take all this time, seven years, in building it, and they stand back. And the truth is, none of it matters nearly as much as two chapters later. Because two chapters later in 1 Kings chapter 8 and verses 10 and 11, it says, And it came to pass, when the priests could not were come out of the holy place, that the cloud filled it. The cloud filled it. The cloud filled it. I do not want partially filled houses truth is this if we can get it full of God we'll get it full of people I believe it with all of my heart go to verse 11 if you will the cloud filled the house so that the priest could not stand up to minister because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God and in chapter 8 they saw the beginning of the project what it all started for God said you give me your best 180,000 for 7 years you give me seven years and I'll show you what I can do in one moment when you get my presence into the house oh ladies and gentlemen I tell you here tonight if we get a move of God in his house it doesn't matter whether the singing is good it doesn't matter whether the preaching is good it doesn't matter whether the floor looks nice or the paint scheme is what we like I'm going to go a step further. I feel real comfortable. You, 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 you let me feel comfortable here tonight. This is my friend. I'm going, to tell, I'm, I'm going to tell on you, and then when you come preach for me, you tell on me, okay? I bet you'd be okay not to have to preach all the time. I don't know. He likes to preach. I don't. He likes to preach because he's called to. But if we walked in this house and all of a sudden the cloud. Come on. I don't want to just talk about being Pentecostal. I want to be Pentecostal. I want there to be miracles and signs and wonders. But that only happens if the glory fills the house. It doesn't happen because our singing's good. It doesn't happen just because our preaching's good. It happens when somebody walks in. Whether you're 12 or Come on, from the youngest to the oldest. Every now and then it takes a 70-year-old. Shuffle out of your seat and say, if nobody else feels him, I feel him. If nobody else wants to see him, I want to see him. If nobody else wants to experience him, I've got to experience. Come on, when the glory fills the house. That's why we enter... Come on, we enter with thanksgiving and praise. That's the biblical determination that you can be in his house and not in his presence. It's why some people get in the physical building and never get into his presence. Some will be drunk in the spirit while some are never moved. 
Wish he'd say something I haven't heard before. Truth is, you don't need me to say anything. You don't need him to say anything. We need the glory of God to fill this house so strong that blinded eyes start opening up and deaf ears start... Come on, am I preaching to any believers on a Sunday night? We showed up for church. We might as well have it. Let this song of the redeemed be in this house. Let the glory of the Lord fill this house. But I know how new buildings go. I've been a part of these. It's a new car smell. We don't, we don't want no trash falling. Give me, give, 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 me give me that pastor. Kill me, pastor. Kill me, dead. Get that. How many remember getting that new car and your kids get in it? Try to get in your new car with ice cream. You can walk home. You can... Has anybody besides me ever threatened the life of your children through the rearview mirror? So help me, God. Listen, I love you. I don't love you like your mama loves you. I love you, but not like you. Listen to me. You listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Listen! If we're not careful, we can treat new built. Now listen, I know y'all are already having great church. But you can treat new buildings like new cars. How many of y'all had a hard time finding your new seat? We don't do that here. <laughs> Midwesterners, yes you do. Yes we do. Same way you feel when you show up and a visitor's in your seat. I guess they don't know. I'm, I'm glad you're here, but I'd be more glad you were here if you were right over there. <laughs> uh, anybody not laughing, you're the problem. It's you. It's you. You're not laughing. It's you. You're the dynamic I'm preaching about. I don't even know what he's saying. I don't agree with any of that. Doesn't make sense to me. It's because it's you. Now you better laugh just to be like, oh, that's right. <laughs> Talking about you, you better laugh. We show up and it's weird. How can we praise the same God in a new space? It's, it's what we do. Listen, you don't have to tell me. I just know how it works. They built this great building. And they get in there and they start going through all the pomp and circumstance. But then they said, we need to remember the most important thing we did was we prepared a place for the presence of God. And when they came carrying that presence of God. The glory. So how do we do that? Because we don't carry a box. We don't have some hand beaten angels with a mercy seat. And how are we supposed to do that? We have no staves. We, we don't carry that thing. I'll tell you how we bring it in. We don't show up for service like it's a chore. And we don't show up for Sunday just so pastor doesn't call us on Monday. We walk in this house and we remember this house tells a story, baby. <laughs> this house, young people and elders alike, hear me right now. This is one of the only places in town that says if you're addicted, Come to our place. If your marriage is on the point of disaster, come to our house. If you feel like you can't get off alcohol, I dare you swing by our house. Because in our house, you will find the story of people that were on their way to a devil's hell. But every Sunday and every midweek, we come walking in this place. Come on, does anybody know this house tells the story of individuals who were lost and who were undone, whose minds were broken. Some of you in this house, depression.
medicine used to have you in its grip. Some of you used to be living by a doctor's report that said you wouldn't even be here in 2024. So you don't need any apologies when you run aisles in this house. and You don't need anybody's forgiveness when you shout all over the new carpet in this house. And we are unabashedly willing to magnify him with everything. We got a song in this place. Even the angels cannot declare. He brought me out of the miry clay. He, he set my feet on the rock to stay. He saved my mind. He saved my heart. He saved my family. That's why we love the house, but we don't worship the house. We worship in the house. Whoa, that's a pretty building you got, Pastor Harpo. Does the building matter at all if we don't still run aisles in here? Does the building matter at all if they walk in attics and back out attics the same way? Does, I'm going to preach it how I feel it. Does the building even matter if our paint looks good but our worship looks weak? No, no, no. It does not matter. It doesn't matter that we got the right the right squares of carpet. It doesn't matter. We got one of the coolest pulpits in Pentecost, and it is. But none of this will matter unless when people walk in this place broken, they can say, I don't know what it was, but I, I felt something. And somebody walks up to them and say, that's the Holy Ghost. The only way the house matters is if somebody who was destined for hell lifts their hands and their trembling fingers and warm, salty tears begin to drip down off their chin as they repent of their sin. The only way this house matters is if heaven worships with us while sinners repent. It's the story of this house. That's fine, Pastor Carson, but you're a visitor here and we had a good house. Now, we haven't talked, so I may be dangerous. I don't know. We had a nice house. It told lots of stories. You know what this is? This is the story that the family's growing. If we poll the people in this crowd right now, if you could list your closest friends, give me your two closest friends. We don't have seats in this house for your two closest. What's the population of Terre Haute? What's 60,000. We got a lot of work. We got a lot of work to do. Well, let's do this. Let's make our, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's make our, 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 our musicians better than ever. Brother, Brother Anderson, I believe in that, don't I? Skillful. He knows. He, our first, first year on the job, he said, you really like excellence, don't you? We do. We like it. And it's tiring. It's exhausting. But he deserves it. David played skillfully. David got, was playing skillful before he got anointed. It takes both. Let's make our singers better. And we should. Listen. Nobody wants to hear. And I will sing. That's probably going to be a gif. Don't do that. Whoever's. Oh, the goodness. Nobody wants that people in. Mm. God, let them land this plane. We try to put good singers up. Good musicians. Y'all have proficient staff. I could barely get in the parking lot. Your team was amazing. Tell, I, I didn't want him to walk through the rain. Walk through the rain to show me where to park. I didn't want that. I like it. I didn't want it. But in all of our proficiency, if he doesn't show up, no lives can really be changed. But if he does, I said if he does, I'm telling your family is not so lost that if he shows up, he cannot... He can save them. They might have been lost for the last 20 years. If he shows up, no man cometh to the Father except that the Spirit draws him. 
Boy, I don't know if you're seeing it already, but I sure feel revival of prodigals in this house. Has that been prophecy over this house? Because I sure feel it in this room right now. I sure feel it in this house. And anybody that questions it, you better hear me. The devil's a liar and the father of every lie. That son is going to come to himself and think about the father's house. He's not going to think about his brother's house. He's not going to think about his sister's house. He's not going to think about the bar or the game. When he comes to himself, he's going to think about the father's house. And if I can get to the house, if I can get to the house, if I can get to the house, Oh, I wish you'd celebrate like you're glad to be a part of the house of God. Come on, let's take a minute and do this right now. I want you to dance like they came in. I want you to worship like your backslidden baby walked in the door. And they said, I was dreaming about the house. I was thinking about the house. I was smelling the aroma of the If you don't think they're reminiscing about the house, you're wrong. They've been dreaming about the house and thinking about the house and wondering about the house. Because the house tells a story. For me, it was an old white farmhouse. For you, it's this. Because everything that that old white farmhouse makes me think about... It pales in comparison to what his house. It was in his house where I heard him call my name. It was in his house where I chose his will over the will of the world. It it was in his house. You know, Brother Harple, when my secular schooling was all paid for, And I had already completed a couple years of marketing. It's what I wanted to do. My dad was tragically ill. All I wanted to do was make money. Everything was lined up. My school was paid. I was done. But in his house, he said, Josh, you know I called you to preach. You know I called you to preach, Josh. Some of you got kids on bar stools and you know they got callings on their life. I'm telling you, I feel it in this room as strong as I've ever felt it. They're going to come to themselves and the first place they want to come is to the house. But they will have a hard time being excited about what we are not excited about. I hasten to a close because I want us to pray. Fast forward. All the way into the New Testament. And Paul's going to ask the church at Corinth. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of God? That the Spirit of God, it dwells in you. Three chapters later, he's going to ask them again. What? Don't you know your body is meant to be the house of God? What are you saying, Paul? We don't go to that house anymore. No, 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 no. He wasn't saying you don't go to the house of God. He was saying things change when you take the house of God to the house of God. Because the good thing about this house is that we don't have to leave the blessings in here. I wonder if I got any tongue talkers in this room here tonight. I wonder if I got any one God, Jesus name baptized, Holy Ghost filled people that know. I'm thankful for the story this house tells. But when you walk into work tomorrow, 
This house tells the story of this house. I was dead, but he saved me. I was lost, but he raised me. And if he did it for me, come on, where are my people that know? If he did it for me, he can do it for you. He can do it for them. He can do it for your family and for your extended. Come on, somebody. Say the house tells a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now. Come, come real close. Come all the way to the splash zone because people are trying to come. Just. Anybody in the room, I didn't plan on preaching, touching prodigals at all, but anybody in the room, even if you're not a demonstrative person, please hear me, even if you're not a demonstrative person, if you got a backslider or a prodigal in your family, I want you to get out of your pew and come as close to the front as you can. Get out of your seat, come as close to the front as you can. My God! I curse the pig pen. I curse the sin of riotous living. I curse the deceitful lies of the enemy. I don't care what bar they're at. I want them. I don't care if they're drunk right now. I want them to start thinking about the Father's house. I, I'm out because I know how cultured we are and if we're not careful we're going to miss this come on we're reaching for souls I'm telling you heaven is real and hell is real every, every hand just put it down for one moment I'm, I'm going to put the mic down I'm not even going to touch it again after this you know you feel compelled to have a breakthrough on behalf of a prodigal, a boxlighter right now. You feel compelled to have a breakthrough. I want you to lift your hand real high. It's not everybody, but it's a bunch of people. Lift your hand. I want everybody to find somebody with a hand or hands up near you. Come on, let the church be the church. Everybody find somebody. Y'all can sing now, but I want you to pray for them. I want you to plead the blood over their family. I want you to make their family your family right now. Come on, that the house would tell the story that the Come on, that the Father would call them. Come on, press. Let them come to themselves. I got to get to the house. The house tells a story. The house tells a story. They can be delivered from those overwhelming thoughts. They can be delivered from that suicidal thinking. They can be delivered from that oppressive thinking. It's the house that tells the story.
victory, victory. Why don't we thank God in advance? It's not pretend. I think, I think Miriam sang the right song on the wrong side. She could have sang the song before they ever crossed over. So we're just going to rejoice as if all that we have prayed for has already come to pass. Come on, just lift up your voice right now. We're thankful for it because you are a great God. And we believe it in the name of Jesus. And everybody we've been praying for, Lord, send your ministering spirits out right now. Let the Holy Ghost be set upon in all the places I pray. Come on, just thank God. Just thank him. I thank you, Lord. Say it, I thank you for bringing back my son. I thank you for the doors. I thank you for the house. I thank you for the opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for the restoration, for the reconciliation. I thank you for it, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Lord. Amen. He's a good God. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the man of God and his sweet family. We thank you, Lord, for Indiana Bible College, Lord, the sacrifices that have been made. We thank you for the young people that are here. I pray your blessing, bountiful blessing, Lord. I pray your blessing and wisdom and anointed, continued anointing on Brother Carson. And I pray, Lord, expand this Holy Ghost revival. Let it spread out through all, throughout all of the region. In Jesus' name, Lord, let there be miracles that happen, Lord. Confirm the gospel, Lord, I pray, with signs and wonders. Let every house be filled with people that are hungry for you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. 
And all the people said in Jesus' name. Amen. There are, I, I haven't been out there, but I, I know that there's a booth or something, and maybe you might want to pick up a few things. It supports the Bible school. And I'm so glad, glad that they, I know the young people had a long day, but they didn't act like they had a long day. In fact, I, I think the day might just be beginning. Who knows? We're thankful for the travel. And I want to say thank you to all of the folks that, that come with the young people, with the, with the youth. There's so many unsung heroes, but I thank you for that. All the bus drivers and the people who iron all the clothes, whatever they're doing. I know how that goes, and so I'm thankful for that. We love you. I pray the blessing of the Lord. We're just going to sing you out the door. God bless you. Thank you for coming. You are dismissed in the fear of the Lord. Be kind and friendly to someone. You're dismissed. Victory is mine. Victory is mine.